So, first of all, <laughs> if I write a quadratic in sort of a generic form, there's an x squared term plus an x term plus a constant, the reason this is called the AC method, or this is what I first heard in college, so this is what I always call it, is if you have a quadratic that looks like a times x squared plus b times x plus c, the two numbers that figure in for the method that get you started are the a and the c. Now, with this particular one, the method would have you take the 21 and multiply it by the negative 35. But there's a step I want to add that makes life a little bit easier. Actually, it makes it a lot easier here. And in fact, you've already solved this problem this period, which, considering that the period's only barely begun, is kind of an amazing thing. So, the first step I want to put here, and I'm going to record the steps over here on the right. Um, so the first step is to divide out any factor yeah, it is recording. So it's pretty sensitive, too. Um, divide out any factor, but that's okay. I don't mind going through and letting everybody hear your conversations. So, you know, I'm not the one that gets embarrassed. So I look at this and I see these three numbers. I gotta ask, are there any numbers? Is there any common factor to the 21, the 14, and the 35? Seven. 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 Well, is there any number that divides 21 and 14 and 35? What did you think? Well, you were right. What did you say, Carolyn? You just said you were right. So. Okay, 7 divides all of them. And so we can take that thing and we can rewrite it as 7. Well, if I factor out the 7... Then I have to ask what's left. Well, this is 7 times 3x squared. This is 7 times 2x. And this is 7 times 5. So what's left is 3x squared minus 2x minus 5. And that should look really familiar because that's the problem that we just looked at on the previous page that uh, Natalie came up with a solution for. So we're going to apply this method to what is a much easier problem than most of the problems you would apply it to. It will solve all quadratics. Okay, This is a method, or it will factor anything that factors. Now, I will show you what we started to make this video with last period, and it was a problem suggested by a student from the previous class. And we had to stop midway through the video because I hadn't worked it out ahead of time, and it turns out that student who multiplied something wrong, the thing they gave us did not factor. In the game, they would have lost two points. Uh, so I need to tell them, hey, fix that, or you'll lose two points when you use it. Um, so I'm going to find out all of those terms, or the, the seven. Now, the reason I can do that is the whole motivation for this is we're trying to find the x-intercepts of a graph, y equals 21x squared minus 14x minus 35. That was our motivating problem. And what we saw was if you could split the quadratic up as two lines multiplied together, then finding the x-intercepts of a quadratic is the same as finding the x-intercepts of the two lines, which we already know how to do. And so... If I divide out of a 7, do I change the values of x that make the thing equal to 0? No. No, because 7 isn't 0. If this whole expression is equal to 0, and it's also equal to 7 times something else, well, the 7 isn't 0, so the something else would have to be. Any value of x that makes the blue thing 0 also makes the thing in parentheses 0, <laughs> and vice versa. So the problem really reduces to this thing. And so that is what we're going to focus on going on. So I divide up that common factor, and then I factor what's left after I pull it out. And I can't spell to save my life for this period of day. So what I'm left with is, let's consider the problem of factoring 
3x squared minus 2x minus 5. And then later on, we'll come back and multiply by 7 on the outside and, and get the result to the original question. So, step 2. Multiply the A and the C, the x squared coefficient, and the y intercept, the constant term. So So that's what I do here. I take this number, the 3, and I multiply it by the negative 5. So 3 times negative 5 is equal to negative 15. Find factors this number and add up to the x coefficient. In other words, that's the number in the middle. So that's going to have me looking at this number, negative 2, and trying to factor negative 15 in a way that adds up to negative 2. So negative 15, I look at this and I say, well, because the product's negative, I need 1 plus and 1 minus. And because they add up to something that's negative, the larger one has to be negative. Um. And in this case, it's not that hard. This is either 1 with negative 15, or it's 3 with negative 5. This one, when I add them up, I get negative 14. And this one, when I add them up, I get minus 2. So that's the one that I want. And the only difference between this and harder problems is you have to list more pairs of factors. Now, Jesse Davidson earlier today, I have named Jesse on the video that we get posted, that's cool. But he gave us a difficult problem to do. He gave us one that I'll show to you in a little bit. <coughs> and I ended up deciding that, well, if he was going to be that mean, we would use some technology on it. And uh, not a black box thing. We just took what we already know how to do by hand and said, let's just let the spreadsheet do it for us. And as my friend used, has said multiple times to me, it's just work. So um, we split that up, and that brings us up to here. So I've got two things. This quadratic, 3x squared minus 2x minus 5, and I've got these factors. So questions so far? Okay. And I will post this on Blackboard on uh, Google Classroom. So you'll have it all written out with this example here. So um, if you fall a little bit behind writing everything down, that's okay because you can go and look at it and fill in the blanks. Um, or just print out the paper on Google Classroom, the PDF file that this will be, and we'll use that. Because one of the things I'm making a video is that nobody wants to, to watch a video that has a long, long pause in the middle of it. But that's okay, because you'll also have the video of this to fall back on. So I've got that, and I've got this factorization. And what I do with it, and as I use the factors from step three, 
to split up the middle term. What we saw yesterday was that that middle term comes from the outer and inner products when you do the FOIL business and adding them together. So you're taking four numbers that get multiplied and added and compressed to one number. And you're trying to figure out what those numbers were that you started with. Um, so what I mean by splitting up the middle term is we take the minus 5 and the 3. This becomes 3x squared minus 5x plus 3x minus 5. And that seems like a weird thing to do, because if you were foiling this, your next step would be to combine those two x terms together. But we're not doing that. We're trying to split them up. So I'm going to then think of this as being split into two pairs. The first two terms and the second two terms. So step five <coughs> for each pair of terms. Divide out our greatest common factor, the largest, most complicated thing you can factor out of both pieces. So with this one, it's actually not a very interesting thing to look at. What's the greatest thing that divides into both 3 and 5? 1. 1. Okay. So there is no number part there, but with these first two terms, since one is always going to involve an x squared and the other one's always going to involve an x, there's always going to be a common factor of x. And with that, you'll get also whatever common factors come from the two numbers. So in this case, the only thing that I have is the x times 3x minus 5 plus, and now what I have here is 1 times 3x minus 5. So for step 6, each group have a common linear factor, ax plus b, let's divide it out. And at that point, you're actually done. So I look at this, I have a common linear factor, 3x minus 5. When I divide it out, then, well, what I need here, this is 3x minus 5 times x, and this is 3x minus 5 times 1. And that's almost the answer to the original question. Remember, the original question has a set on the outside. So the 21x squared minus 14x minus 35. Oops. This is equal to 7 times x plus 1 times 3x minus 5. That's the complete factorization of the original thing. So the common factor of 7 came out, and then we get a linear factor times a linear factor. The x-intercepts of this quadratic, 21x squared minus 14x minus 5, are going to be the x-intercepts of this line. Well, negative 1 makes this 0, and positive 5 thirds makes this one 0. And so that's where this quadratic is going to hit the x-axis, at negative 1 and at positive 5 thirds. So, 
when you're playing the game, you probably need to put a penalty for incorrectly telling an opponent that they're wrong, that they gave you a wrong problem. So what you want to be aware of, if I take three numbers, say three and five and seven, and I compute three times five and multiply it by seven, and that computes three times seven and multiplies it by five, and uh, Blair computes five times seven and multiplies it by three, do they all get the same answer? So if, uh -huh. if one person takes 3 times 5 and multiplies it by 7, another person takes 3 times 7 and multiplies it by 5, another person takes oh, yes, they do. Um, 5 times 7 and multiplies it by 3, are the answers all the same? Yes. Okay, it doesn't matter when you're multiplying a bunch of numbers how you group them or what order you do it in. So because of that, I can think of this as the 7 times this first factor, which is 7x plus 7 times 3x minus 5. Or I can think of it as that middle factor, x plus 1, multiplied by what I get if I distribute the 7 against the 3x minus 5. So it may be that you created this quadratic by multiplying these last two things. And notice that one of your two lines had a common factor already. And so they work it out and they say, well, I get 7x plus 7 times 3x minus 5. And you say, oh, that's not right. Well, no, you're actually not right. All three of these are valid. All three of these are exactly the same. What I mean by that is if you go into your graphing calculator and you type this function in, y equals 7 times x plus 1 times 3x minus 5, and then you type in this next function, y equals 7x plus 7 times 3x minus 5, and then you type in this last one, and then you type in this quadratic up here. If you put in all four of these, y1, y2, y3, and y4, and graph them, you'll get four copies of exactly the same graph. If you look at the table of values, you'll get identical t-charts for each one of them. Because they're algebraically equivalent. They, any value of x you plug in gives you the same output. They have the same x-intercepts, the same y-intercept. They match at every single point. So um, this is something to be aware of as we move into your more complicated challenges that you'll want to look at and see if you built any that have a common factor and, and somebody thinks they've got the correct answer, allow that that common factor might be pulled out and stuck into a different factor, or might be pulled out entirely. And you have to be able to recognize all of these as being correct answers.